Hey, what's up guys? Molten Lava here, and I am going to show you my method and the steps I take for preparing my loadout for a game. I was asked for a more informal video, so this is the best I could really think up of that wasn't already covered by someone else. So this is just my personal method of preparing for a match. Um, I'm not saying that you should use it, and it it's it's been working pretty good for me <laughs> for the entire time I've been using it, which is pretty much forever. So the first step that I usually go for is I choose my mech. So let's say I was going to go with the Helix. Sure. Uh, so yes, I've chosen the Helix. The next step uh, that I usually take is I choose my pilot. Now each pilot has different stats. I'm sure everyone knows that already. And what I usually look for in the stats are things that correspond with the properties of my helix here. Now, let's say I was going to use my helix for a lot of microing and moving all my units around. Um, if, if I were going to be doing that, I would need a lot of energy efficiency while flying. So there are a few pilots that I can think of that give me that bonus, one of which is Natasha, that gives me plus 20% flight energy efficiency, Ashe, who gives me plus 15 flight energy efficiency, and then there is Mako here, who gives me plus 33% flight energy efficiency. He is very good for microwing, although he does give you minus 10% airspeed, which will slow down the speed at which you micro. Uh, not by that horribly much, but it is a... It is a fairly large decrease in speed. So, uh, there's another thing that you have to consider with the Helix, is its air-to-ground missiles. Um, those tend to drain your energy a lot, and when you're fending off um, enemy mechs here and there and all over the place, you tend to drain your outposts a lot, and then you're not able to recharge enough. So... Ashe gives plus 30% recharge rate, which will very largely help with recharging your energy and your health when your outposts are running out of their energy. So I usually use Ashe for my helix just because of the um, stats that it gives. The plus 50% missile shootdown chance doesn't really apply that much to the helix because I never really just try circling around enemies trying to shoot down their missiles. Um, I mainly just use him because of the energy efficiency and the recharge rate. And now the next step I usually go for is choosing my item and my parts. Just like the pilot, these the stats of these items and parts should correspond with what you're planning on doing with your air mech. So let's uh, let's continue with my carry mech theory. Like, I'm going to be using my Helix to carry a lot of units. Uh, first off is your power core package. Uh, now you have the standard core, which is just standard. It doesn't give you anything or take away anything. Then you have the quick charge core. I do not recommend this quick charge core because it is just um, the standard quick charge core. Each air mech has its own specialized quick charge core for that mech only and uh, most if not all of them have um, a pretty cool image too like this one um, now there it is now I don't uh, really ever that much use the, um, the quick charge cores because it takes away from my energy capacity but look at the recharge rate it gives me plus eight percent recharge rate and that combined with Ashe's plus 30% recharge recharge rate gives me a total of 38 recharge rate if you could see there right there in the stats uh that's plus 38 recharge rate so I will be recharging my energy and my health very quickly and next is your engine you have a lot of engines to choose from especially if you have the uh different marks of engines um a lot of people usually go for the rotary turbine engine for the Helix, but I don't usually do that because it gives plus 10, uh, sorry, minus 10% flight energy efficiency. Although it does give plus 6% airspeed, I do like to have my flight energy efficiency, so I never really use that. Oh, and that's the Mark IV. 
the Mark One, or just the normal one, I guess, also takes away from the energy efficiency. It gives the same amount of speed for all of the Marks. I don't have the Mark Three with me because I didn't really see a point to buy it. As you can see, my kudos are kind of crying up there. Okay. What I usually go for is the Blue Printed Turbines Mark IV. This is the engine that I use with pretty much every single mech because of its stats. You get plus 10% flight energy efficiency and plus 5% airspeed. So it only gives one less airspeed than the rotary turbine engine, but it gives... <laughs> it gives the same amount of flight energy efficiency that the rotary turbine engine Mark IV takes away. So the trade-off between these two engines is just huge. And it's negatives. The auto repair rate, um, I never really use the auto repair rate that much with the Helix or with any mech in my experience. And 5% uh, is just a minimal amount. And the respawn time, as long as you don't die, you're going to be fine. Next are the weapon parts. Now, these, um, I normally don't touch these for my Helix because of their negative stats. Like, for instance, the depleted uranium ammunition, or the DPU ammo, uh, takes away 3% air and ground speed, which I do like my speed. I don't like being a sort of a tortoise mech. <clears throat> oh my gosh, excuse me. Okay, now. So yeah, I usually just leave these alone unless I'm going for a speed helix, a speed and firepower helix, in which case I use this, the Flak Ammo Mark IV. It takes away 7% air mech ground's gun attack, uh, ground gun's attack power, which, in my opinion, that's just fine, because I don't really use the ground gun attack power that much. But the air gun's attack power, um, <clears throat> in my experience, I usually get chased down quite a lot by helices, and I'm not sure if they use this, but if they do, it definitely boosts their damage output, and you die pretty quickly when you're using that, but that is not what I'm going for with this one. Remember, this is going to be a carry mech, so I usually just leave those alone for carry mechs. And then, your armor. Look at all of the possibilities here, my goodness. Now, if you have this, this special part here, the alien metal, I highly recommend you use this, like, no matter what loadout you're going for, because it gives you plus 2% airspeed and plus 3% damage resistance. Usually things that give you speed take away damage resistance. This gives you both. So I usually use this in one of the slots. And then uh, this, what what happens here usually depends. Um, since I'm going for a carry mech, energy efficiency is preferred. And this gives plus 6% energy efficiency, but it does take away a lot of speed, which I don't really like. If I do add this on, I have a total of negative 3% airspeed, which in hindsight is not really that much, because without all of this, you would have plus 0, or minus 0, I guess, both of those. You would have no modification on your air or ground speed. So, this is only 3% slower than the normal mech, which, it, it's really not that slow, so I usually tend to use this, and the negative 10% ground speed, which is the total amount of ground speed that I am given right here, I don't really usually care about that, because in a helix, I'm not usually running around, jogging, uh, running a marathon or anything, I'm just, uh, when I do land, I shoot my rockets, my rockets for the ground-to-ground -ground missiles, which are fairly powerful. Um, I don't really strafe that much, so I just tend to just hold still, maybe move around a little bit to avoid some sort of fire. The airspeed for me is what really counts because that's how you get, that's how you make your getaway. Uh, for the exception of other mechs that are meant for speed, then I really care about ground speed. All right, now we are going to the special parts and. There are a few possibilities here, not too many. Uh, for one of these slots, I usually get one of these four energy efficiency chips. They're actually just called efficiency chips. Pfft, efficiency chips, I can speak. Okay, so I usually use the efficiency... Oh my gosh, the efficiency chip. I usually use the efficiency chip, Mark IV. 
Uh, it gives me plus 6% energy efficiency, which is what the Mark III gives, uh, and the Mark II, as a matter of fact. Though this one does give plus 2% credits earned for whatever reason, and hey, more in-game money, why not? Build more stuff to micro it <laughs> all over the place, so I usually use that. And now, uh, I am usually conflicted with the last part that I use here. Since I am going for a recharge carry mech, this would help. The inertial rechargers. It gives an extra plus 10% recharge rate. So, uh, for the negative of minus 1% unit upkeep, which does practically nothing at all. So, this would be a good choice. Although, the armored hand also does uh, some pretty good things. The plus 5% auto repair rate sort of makes up for what the uh, blueprinted turbines Mark IV takes away. So, you will get your auto repair rate back. And it also adds some extra damage resistance, though it's not that much. And then the agility hand, extra uh, guns, attack power, uh, that would help. Although I am, uh, since I'm, since uh, I've said this again, and I'm, I've said this once, I'm gonna say it again. Since I'm not going for an attack mech, I'm going for a carry mech. I'm not gonna use that, and the transform speed doesn't really do me that much. So I am gonna use the inertial rechargers. And now, since I still have uh, all of my mechs are level 10, by the way, this uh, this uh, will probably not work for you if you're a newer player. But I'm the basic idea. What I'm trying to say here is. Use parts that boost the stats that you want to use your mech for, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I've been stressing the idea of a carry mech because of all the parts that I'm using. You may not have the alien metal, you may not have enough room to put in all of these parts, and that's just fine. But as long as you put in at least one or two parts that boost the stats of your mech according to what you want to use it for, then that should work um, in your favor. It usually does for me. And since my Helix is level 10, I still have a few uh, part points that I could spend on uh, one of these. So if I were to choose, I would choose the Flak Ammo Mark IV, though just to keep my faster respawn and my ground attack power, my ground guns attack power at a little bit higher of a number, I'm just gonna stay away from that. And now the item. Uh, in my case, I have a lot of choices. A lot of choices. Now, as you can see, my mech still does have that negative 3% airspeed. Now, if I were to, if I did want, if I did feel like I wanted to kind of almost reverse that effect, or maybe at least just make it not ex non-existent anymore. I would use the Jingle Bells because they do give me plus two percent air and ground speed. That is a very commonly used item for all mechs, and its new variant is the Beer Stain from the Oktoberfest items, and I've been using that more often because it's just awesome. They both give the exact same stats, holiday spirit and speed, but whatever i've got tired of the pingle uh the the picture of the jingle bells um so if you have one of the three towels the red white and purple towels you will see that they give you another plus 10% recharge rate yeah so if you want recharge rate m even more recharge rate these are the items to go for uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember if any other item here gives recharge rate. Um, I don't think so. So I'm pretty sure that these the towels are the only thing that give recharge rate. So I usually use the red towel uh, because it is Good Day's red towel of OPness. Everybody knows that. So now my Helix has a total of plus 62% recharge rate which outdoes my style, which is not a very common thing to happen. I usually have a lot more style than I have anything else. But look at that recharge rate. That is a lot of recharge. So it's... It's a lot of recharge rate. So you will be getting your energy and your health back very quickly. And you will be a happy air maker. And another thing to consider is your guardian. You have a couple choices here. 
For a Helix, I usually go with the Energy Guardian because there are just so many functions that the Helix does that requires energy, and this will just give you even more of that. So it's really just common sense. And then the units. Um, the units don't really have anything to do with your mech that much, that is. Um, since I am going as a carry mech, I will keep in mind that I can take some of the more heavy units. So, um, yeah, for a basic... My basic loadout is I just have a tank here, a healing unit of some sort here, an infantry here, a, sometimes a socket unit here, most, time, most of the time a generator, anti-air here, uh, artillery here, and then random units here and here. Sometimes a jamming unit, and sometimes... Uh, I forget what I usually put there. Like, sometimes, like, bombs or heavy mines or something. So, for the for this helix, I would take a longhorn as just a basic tank, because the longhorn is just good. If you wanted to take armadillos, you could probably carry a lot of those um, with minimal damage to your energy. But I usually go with the Longhorn because the Armadillos die really fast, despite how much damage they do. And for the Anti-Air, I'm just going to go with the Hunter Seeker, because that's just my standard Anti-Air unit. If you don't have a Hunter Seeker, you can just use a Seeker. There isn't really that much difference. It's just plus some missile speed and negative damage, although your enemies do get chased away by your missiles quicker. For my healing unit, I typically go with a Ratchet not a heavy ratchet because they do take away some repair some move speed some carry weight uh, they add some carry weight and they add some build cost only for a few extra armor points which I don't really care that much about because like as long as I keep my units alive which I'm fairly good at doing I won't really need much more armor addition onto my units and now for the artillery um, I typically take the Archie Aggressor. If you don't have an Archie Aggressor, just go for the Archie. They're pretty much the same thing. Archie Aggressor, in fact, takes away some damage points. Um, again, proving the fact that I don't really care about the armor that much. But it does give some damage to it, so it, it can thin out your enemy's units quicker. If you keep it alive, which you should be pretty good at doing if you just pick it up with your super OP carry mech here. And for the infantry, you can really take whatever you want for the infantry. Um, I wouldn't really recommend Brutes for a 1v1, though I haven't really tried it that much. I did try it a few times in the past, it did not really work out that well for me. In the current meta, I would recommend using a Morty. Um, maybe an Assassin? They were just recently, uh, temporarily, apparently, nerfed. Um... Boomers, I wouldn't really recommend Boomers that much because of their expendability. So I would just take... I'm just going to take a Morty because that's usually what I do take in the first place. Um, oh, and I didn't specify this. This loadout would be if I were going into 1v1. If you were going into a 2v2 or a 3v3, all of this would vary on what your teammates would have. For instance, if your teammate already had an Archie Aggressor, you wouldn't really want to have an Archie Aggressor because there's always someone, uh, already someone on your team who has that. So maybe you'd want to go for the more late game unit, uh, the more late game artillery, the Bertha, or maybe an Artie for its extra, I guess, effectiveness against the jamming of Sonya's jammers and the never used dingers there. <laughs> and again, with it varies with the infantry. If someone already has Mortys, maybe you want to take a shooter. Those can be pretty effective if you're going for some sort of mid-fight, and if you keep them well enough hidden in your unit clusters, maybe in the middle of one of your tanks so you can't really see it. Of course, their bullets are going to be seen. Um, then you could definitely take a different sort of infantry. So... Uh, and also, if you're in a 2v2 or a 3v3, your entire mech can vary. Like, if someone already has a Helix carry mech or not, regardless, 
you may not want to use that. You may want to use something like uh, maybe an Osprey to heal them up, or perhaps a Striker. It really depends, uh, especially if you see what your enemy has. If your enemy is consisting, like, if you're in a 3v3 and you're against, like, three angels, then you probably want to have uh, at least one Helix on your team, because the Helix is the primary counter, in my experience, uh, for the angel. Just fly up to it and start shooting at, sh uh, shooting your missiles at it, and it'll fly away, because they, uh, the angels are pretty light armor. All right, let's continue with building my loadout here. Now, since I am in a 1v1, I would expect the other player to have some artillery as well. And since I'm not sure what map I'm going to be going on, I usually take a jammer. It sort of varies on the map because some maps you can't really have a mid fight on, be uh, like Vale. Since Vale does not have a middle outpost, you can't really have many artillery fights on that, period. If it's on a map like that, then I would choose a Sonya, because I would have more time to level up before having to make a jamming unit of some sort. But if I was something, if I were on a map like uh, Dust, the new simple, I would probably prefer taking a jammer because of how close the mid is to both sides. The mid fight starts pretty much immediately on Dust, so let's say I'm playing on Duel. The mid fight also starts fairly soon on Duel, so I'm just gonna take a jammer for that. And in 1v1, you get plenty of credits, and if you put down money makers in the start of the game, your enemy can just fly over there and tear them all up. But if you are a Helix, you can ward them away. I typically don't use money makers, but I I do replace them with generators because I do uh, because I keep all my units alive. I usually max out on my unit cap quite often, um, forcing me to make these generators to allow me to make some more. And here I usually use I usually put an expendable unit of some sort. Um, sometimes I would take a bomb. Sometimes I'll take heavy mines. They both sort of serve the same purpose, like bombs are... They can be both for harassment and defending against a push. Uh, heavy mines, they're very rarely used for harassment, but they can't... They are mainly used for defending against a push. And... Hmm... Let's just say in this case I'm going to be taking heavy mines. I, I haven't seen those very often. So... If I'm, if I'm correct, this should be my complete 1v1 carry mech helix loadout. Um, and then, of course, there's the cosmetics and pets. You can choose whatever the heck you want for these. It really, literally does not matter. Um, I'm not going to say what I usually put for these because it, the, my input is not really important in that sense. So this would be my loadout for a 1v1 on duel. Um... Not sure against what, but he, in my experience, Helix usually does good against all classes of mechs. So, um, I'm just going to give another example for the parts corresponding with the stats of the mech, the um, what you want to use your mech for. So, let's go with the Striker. So for the Striker, you may want to use Lexi, although you will die rather quickly. Uh, I sometimes use Lady Gaia. Although she does take away some attack power, you can easily gain that back with parts. And the negative unit build speed, I don't really notice it that much, because I can, with the plus air speed and pl uh, the plus energy efficiency and plus transform speed, I can just fly all around the map harassing whatever I want to, and because she does not take away any uh, damage resistance, uh, I usually last uh, I, my, I guess, harass missions usually last a little bit longer than that of Lexi's. So, I typically use Lady Gaia. Now, for the parts, I don't really ever use any of those cores, ever. 
well, this one particularly, I always use either this one or their or the Mech's specialized quick charge core. In this case, I will use my quick charge core. Now, because I'm going to be harassing and trying to kill a lot of mechs everywhere and all over the place, I am going to be adding in some weapon parts. The DPU ammo, plus 5% air mech guns attack power on the air and the ground, that's just good for the airspeed that it takes away. I'm going to add that. And then... For chasing mechs down, the flak ammo Mark IV is extremely helpful, so I will take that as well. Now, um, regarding my airspeed, I still have plus 2% because of Lady Gaia's addition to it. But now comes the structural parts, or the armor. Again, I'm going to be using my alien metal, which adds another 2 airspeed, so I'm just getting airspeed all over the place. And I forgot to put my engine on. Like I said, I usually put my blueprinted turbines Mark IV, which adds another 5 airspeed and more flight energy efficiency. So if I look at my stats, I have plus 30% energy efficiency and plus 9% airspeed. So I will be a very quick and efficient harass mech. And for the other part, I us uh, ooh, for the other part, I usually use uh, the heavy helmet armor because it adds a good amount of damage resistance and it only takes away one flight energy efficiency and 3% ground speed which doesn't really matter that much uh, I have I have negative 6 but I never really noticed that and then for this I usually put in my efficiency chip for even more flight energy efficiency and more transform speed because Lady Gaia does add 20 on our own, so now I have plus 27 transform speed, plus 35 flight energy efficiency, and I still have plus 9% airspeed. I think that's going to stay how it is unless I add Jingle Bells or the Bierstein as my item. And now for the last special part, I am just without a part. And now, oftentimes, I do replace the efficiency chip Mark IV with the agility hand for yet more transform speed although it does not give as much as this clearly it gives five less it does give even more guns attack power that is for both the air and the ground and for my item hmm, hmm, hmm. for this I would actually probably go with the jingle bells and now with all of this added together uh, I usually go with the Blade Guardian because that is the only Guardian that follows you that does not die when you're getting shot at. It only goes away unless you almost self-destruct or if you just get killed completely. So, now, if I'm looking at my stats here, I have plus 40% missile shootdown chance, plus 29% energy efficiency, plus 22% transform speed, plus 11% airspeed, and then here's the good stuff, plus 10% air, uh, air guns attack power, plus 9% guns attack power, and then there's plus 7% air max damage resistance, plus 2% recharge efficiency, and plus 8% recharge rate. That last little bit was out of order a tad, but I don't care. Those are all very good stats, as opposed to the negatives, which is just ground speed, the attack power, which is clearly made up for, the auto repair rate, which, again, I don't really care about, the energy capacity, the ground guns attack power, again, made up for, unit build speed, faster respawn and the cheaper respawn. I will probably not be dying because of my addition of air mech damage resistance as opposed to Lexi's subtraction of it. So, parts and items and pilots really do make a difference for what mech you're using. And this is probably my most commonly used combination of parts from my striker here. And I do enjoy using it very much. It is very fun. And if I take this quick charge core away, will I be able to add anything else? No, it's not. I still only have five parts, so I'll just keep that. And then, once again, you can choose whatever the heck you want for these. And for the units, again, it matters if you're in 1v1, 2v2, or 3v3. But let's go back to our carry mech helix here. The red towel of O-penis. Epic. <laughs> okay. Um... 
that is really all I have to say on this subject. That is how I set up my loadout. Uh, usually I go through the motions a lot quicker, because this time I'm explaining everything to everyone, and uh, when I'm just quickly preparing for a match, I can go through all that in my head, like, like just lickety-split. And... How you use it is another thing. I'm not I'm not guaranteeing that you will win by using this strategy because if you still use horrible strategies or if you still die a lot, you will probably end up losing. So it does depend a lot on how you plan on actually performing with this loadout. And I may do a video giving a few tips uh, in the future sometime, but in the meantime, that is all I have to say. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video, whenever that may be. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace.